Well, if you've been following resources in the news recently, you'll know that iron ore producers are not the only ones wrestling with a downturn. The price of coal, both thermal for power stations and metallurgical for steel production, has been on the slide, with many coal mines now mothballed or on the go slow and jobs lost. Well, one of the companies battling the downturn is Whitehaven Coal, whose mine includes Malls Creek, once owned by Nathan Tinkler. Last month, Whitehaven managed a major $1.4 billion refinancing and its chief executive Paul Flynn joins me now from Canberra and uh, Paul Flynn welcome there look I suppose the big surprise for ordinary folk would be that uh, that in these difficult times with lower coal prices that you're actually expanding production Yes, and no, it does. Uh, it does seem like somewhat of a contradiction. But um, as we know, each global cycle has a different story within a story, and, uh, and our company's specific story is all about uh, is about growing, and we're growing with quality growth at the bottom of the cycle, but with uh, with first tier cost production that will see us as a more robust company through the cycle. Now, how are you managing to do that? Well, it's a combination of getting costs out of our existing business, but also, as you've mentioned, uh, bringing on production from high-quality mines. And certainly our Narrabri mine, our, our very high-quality underground mine, and now Moores Creek, uh, will certainly be bringing down the average cost of the business in addition to just straight costs out within our existing businesses. Yeah. I mean, you, you make quite a big point, too, the fact that your, your market is not China, where, where much of the slowdown is happening. It's uh, Japan, South Korea, those sorts of countries. But, but the, 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 the fall in Chinese demand is impacting the coal price, isn't it? Yes, it is. It, it is indeed. Now, there's certainly some, we believe, some leakage coming out of uh, displaced tons would otherwise be into China, moving into, uh, into the Korean market to some degree. But uh, our primary market is Japan, and uh, they pay a premium for the quality coal that we have. And, yeah. and going forward in the future, it's the quality that everybody will demand. So I, we think we're well positioned. I guess, I guess with, I, I think thermal's down about 10%, metallurgical down 23%. I guess the question is, is it going to get to a stage, even for Whitehaven, where, where ongoing production is not sustainable? And what is that level? Well, I think when you look at the global mix, I think Chinese production is well underwater, a great proportion of it is, which is quite surprising given their, their labour advantage in terms of their cost. Uh, Indonesian production has a hell of a lot under, underwater and certainly that uh, that is a bigger issue for them rather than the Australians. I think the Australians have impressed, impressed the world in terms of the rate at which they've been able to get costs out. So as, as um, rationalisation occurs, particularly from the quality dimension I mentioned, mm. but also from the sustainability of your cost base, the Australians have actually responded better to this lower cost, this lower price paradigm than I think uh, the other jurisdictions have. Mm. Now, uh, you're trying to make coal really the new black in a way, and, mm. and yet from the top, you know, we've got, I think Friday, the Norwegian parliament uh, are likely to force the uh, sovereign wealth fund to bail out of coal stocks. So all the way from the top, right down to grassroots and your Malls Creek and the community backlash there, there seems to be a lot up against coal. Um, do you see it having a real future in this country? Oh, look, we're absolutely confident in the future of coal in, uh, in the future. There's no doubt about that. Uh, you've mentioned a number of different topics, so I'll try and cover them off. Um, if we look at the Norges position, that's an interesting one, somewhat contradictory, I would think, given that that uh, sovereign wealth fund has certainly uh, arrived at a position of great wealth off the back of fossil fuels. Um, how do we see that playing out here domestically? Uh, as you mentioned, we've just refinanced the company. We've done it very successfully, nearly two times oversubscribed in terms of the underwriting. So when the rubber hits the road, I think people are forming a similar view to us that coal is here to stay. Yeah. Good quality coal will be in demand in the future. And those banks wanting to fund our business is certainly a demonstrable demonstration that they are indeed uh, behind this industry and its place in the future. But you clearly do have major community issues at Moores Creek at the moment. I mean, one of the, the, the latest concerns that locals have is about water. Um, um, and obviously a lot used for coal washing to improve the quality of the coal. Um, now, I think your water management plan has about 1.2 gigs of runoff being captured in, in year two. Uh, might you not need to scale back Malls Creek, given that we're headed for El Nino? Uh, look, uh, the, the community concern is actually not real in our community. There's only a very small proportion of people uh, in our community that are uh, that are at odds with the things that we do. In fact, we enjoy a very large proportion of people who are supportive of what we do. But, but, uh, but is the media, I mean, the, the shots that we see in the media, is that is that not reflective of, of quite a significant opposition now? N not on a local level, Tiki, no, not at all. I mean, those, those people are flying up there to visit the area from cities. They're not the local people. Uh, we would say that 70 
you, 80% of the people in the community are very much behind us, as are many of the Indigenous people who we're working with. It's certainly not reflective of local voice, no. Mm. Well, you certainly with that refinancing look, look, look like you're well, well here to stay for the moment. Paul Flynn, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure, Tiki. Thank you. And that's all.